Hello everybody from Puerto Rico. My name is Antonio Delgado and I'm very, very, very excited to stay with all of you in the e-learning Korea 2014 with the Congress e-learning for the designing my life. I'm very, very excited to stay with all of you and uh, I hope that you enjoy this conference. Let's take a look of the map. Okay, and we, you are here in South Korea. Okay, and I am in the Caribbean. Let's mark a little, little pixel. This is Puerto Rico, and our first language is Spanish. The second language is English. But I promise, I promise that I can do my best to uh, share with all of you my presentation. This is a, a bigger map of Puerto Rico. I'm living in this square. This is the municipality of Manati. But I am transmitting with Olivia Arevalos here in Guaynao, <coughs> Guaynao, Puerto Rico. And if we move to the Arecibo municipality, here is the University of Puerto Rico in Arecibo, where I work in our projects of e-learning and instructional design. This map you present where we are in the University of Puerto Rico in Arecibo. This is our college. And, and this is the administrative building of the University of Puerto Rico in Arecibo. This area work our provost and our deans. This is the administrative building and all the administrative personnel of the University of Puerto Rico <coughs> in Arecibo. Well, in UPR, in Arecibo, we are working with the uh, um, learning management system Moodle. This is an open source. With Moodle, we can uh, manage the e-learning courses with the students and professors. Uh, we don't have uh, a lot of funds to pay for annual learning management system licenses like a Blackboard. This is why we select Moodle as uh, our best uh, learning management system platform. What is the use that we are doing with uh, Moodle, this is um, the presential core support we are using uh, to uh, content repository uh, to, ma to save our contents in the platform uh, and the student has to access this um, on the internet, on the web, and we are using um, <coughs> the platform for online test administration and for blended learning. This year we're starting, in this academic year we're starting uh, with a B-learning pilot project where I'm, I'll be participating as an instructional designer. We will work with the first five professors this semester and then um, next semester we will be working with uh, a second group of five professors and then we hope to impact them professors this academic year 2014-2015. Um, for me, in this project of e-learning uh, right now, uh, this is a form of a static, a little dumb, restrictive, unquestionable, excessive control, authoritarian, and bureaucratic form of e-learning. E I think that we have to change this paradigm of e-learning to the traditional co courses in, uh, in the new platform to promote the learning in our students. It's like um, convert the physical classroom into a digital class. That is uh, an activity of the uh, 20th century, uh, 20,000th century, okay? And we have to move for a new abilities, new forms of instructional design 
and educational technology. Let's take a look at this graphic. If you see the left picture, this is the educational technologies of the um, 1980s, 1990s, working with analogic resources. These resources are very uh, cost effective, uh, very expensive to design the different uh, learning resource or instructional resource for learning, uh, creating transmission of radio, creating videos, uh, creating uh, cities of music, cities of multimedia. And if we change that content, we have to reproduce different different and a lot and a lot the quantities of these resources for each student. If you look at the right picture, this is the instructional designer. The instructional designer consume models like Dick and Curry, Sita and Glass, Army, Adi, Assure, e-learning uh, instructional design models and I think as instructional designers we have to change this paradigm and move on to the new paradigms and I think that uh, educational technologies mof must move uh, working for with digital devices uh, different uh, software um, open sources uh, web tools Premium, that's the combination of free and the premium. And the instructional designer uh, need to improve their, their abilities, their knowledge on how to work with the instruction. We have to move from instruction to learning. So the instructional designer of the 21st century must be a prosumer, a combination of uh, consumer and producer must be an uh, edu scientific, a theorizer, and a social practitioner. This is the new uh, abilities of competencies of the instructional designer of the 21st century. That's me. This is my uh, working in, in my office. And I think I don't want to stay sitting all day long in my office waiting for the professors trying to fix in their technical needs. I think I need more move more uh, across the project with the students, uh, with professor and uh, administrative or in uh, different activities of the university. I think um, I like my dream is to work with uh, promote the student participation. Student in this picture is working with WISAQ uh, uh, as a platform for giving uh, virtual conferences, they learn to create the new own learning resources to share with the class. Uh, the students and the professor are distributed in the university, uh, connected with uh, in the web, and they learn to use the data to convert it in information and, and use, uh, useful information then they design knowledge with a different software or an, another platform or a new mobile application or web service. The instructional designer uh, and the educational technologies most working in, in the design of e-learning projects. For example, this is a picture of last week. We are coordinating the expo tutoring 2014, where the student tutors will demonstrate how to use the mobile application of web tools, web services, to design learning resources for tutored students. This activity will be uh, in October 10, 2014, at the Theater of the University of Puerto Rico in Arecibo. If you see the picture, each student will work with a different a, a mobile device with a different uh, a mobile application or a web tool to promote the learning in the students. This is um, uh, a sharing environment uh, of knowledge across the technology. We 
the instructional designer and educational technology, we must work as event organizers. Uh, this is um, the promo of the educative debate about disruptive education with Juan Domingo Farnos from Spain that we talk about learning is work and Juan Quintana from Puerto Rico will talk about learning is leisure. It will be the, uh, I will be the host in this edu event with the iStudio uh, within Google Hangout, I hope, uh, uh, the Spain people and Latin American people uh, to be connected with us in this in, in remarkable uh, activity uh, talking about education. When we talk about the infrastructure, we need to talk to we need to talk to change. Uh, we are working now closely connected into technology te techno educational projects holding interesting conversations and sharing what we learn. The closed infrastructure promotes isolation and instructional scarcity. We need new learning space hyperconnected with synaptic, synaptic, social, and artificial knowledge. Now, I hope it's, this is my dream to work in a new learning environment. We don't need computers located in, in lines with people learning isolated. Uh, we need to create new learning spaces where the people join to solve com complex problems to create new collective consumer products, um, predict uh, emergent phenomena, and increase the possibilities of other. This, uh, the, this new learning infra infrastructure um, help us to augment the capacity of knowledge. This is in my personal learning in the network. You can see in me with my people, this, this Edumorphosis logo, and you can see uh, all the people that is following me in this in the personal network, and we can link with another friends, with another colleagues, of education, like Alfredo Calderón, like Gina Delgado, of Educa PR. Uh, I connect with Bernabe Soto at the University of Sacred Heart, and Antonio Bantallato at the University of Sacred Heart in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and James Lin at the University of Turabo in Puerto Rico. This is my personal learning network. People around the world linked. We meet every day in sharing knowledge, sharing resources, uh, sharing videos, web presentation, a lot of information, all of education, how to transform, how to make the disruptive education of the 21st century. Now I, I would like to share with all of you, uh, this is a project I'm working uh, since a lot of, uh, a few months ago, and uh, this is um, design your own learning resources. This is a proposal. It's an educational proposal designed by me for educators to design and produce auto autonomously their own learning resource without having uh, to rely on the impositions of the educational system for which they are working. Rather, it consists of a series of new technological competences that extend the traditional roles of educators. Now we talk about produce, create, develop, build, devise, make the imagination visible, explore, modify, refine, replace, share, disseminate, transform, and extend the learning possibilities dictate lectures every day of the academic term is an adequate inadequate methodology we need to manage we do not need to manage standard evidence and conducting home based activity for the classroom uh, are no longer effective to detect uh, multiple learning capabilities of our students the objective of this model i'm sharing with you is to promote the, the teaching community disposing 
uh, the obsolete mental models that are still practiced in the classroom. And I'm going to explain you uh, the different stages of the model uh, design your own learning resources. Okay. In this graphic, we can identify the, the gaps, okay? The different gaps uh, when we work in this stage, we are talking about how can we identify cognitive, attitudinal, aptitudinal, collective awareness, and generational gaps in the process of learning. With this information, we can move to the second stage, uh, talking about design competencies. In the competencies is information that we need uh, to get a, how are the interest, the necessities, the talent or skills uh, to produce emerging and evolutive goals. With this information, we can move to the third stage, that is developing learning ecologies. We are talking about uh, personal learning environments, we're talking about personal learning network, social learning environments, personal development in environments where we can create our own in e-portfolios. And we can use tools like Ning to create, uh, as we know as uh, collaborative innovation for create different network for educators. We also using different content curation and self organizer communities uh, we working with open courses, uh, open coursewares, and the MOOCs. The MOOCs are using in different countries like United States, uh, some countries of Europe, and some countries of Asia, as a new form of education based in uh, open, massive content. Very interesting how the the MOOCs are moving in in the educational settings. Then. We are going to move to the fourth stage called design cultural products. Here we're working with platforms, with format, with typology of um, if how can we communicate with others to learn. We're talking about uh, technological information and communication. We talk about technology for um, knowledge, uh, we are talking about for technology to participate and empower our students. This is the three important typologies of the e-learning. But we're talking about um, applications, how to use devices uh, to create new spaces of learning. Then we are moving uh, to the fifth uh, stage. Uh, we are talking about apply constructed knowledge. It's very important because we are creating a multimodal, multisensorial, multicontextual, multiformat and multimedia resources of learning. Then we are moving to the important stage because we are in working, we are reaching, we are in, in uh, making in the investigation about the process, about the activities about the organization and how we work with the results to take the better options, to take the better decisions in the learning process with the student and um, thinking about administrative or pedagogical or um, instructional forms to fix the problems, to fix in the incorrect uh, content, incorrect knowledge of the uh, students and we are talking about the um, move on to the uh, last stage called metacognition. Without metacognition, we don't or we can learn. We need metacognition to um, be submerged in a reflection, amplification, modification, and replace all the content to um, make a better process of learning. This is the seven stages of the model uh, called um, Design Your Own Learning Resources. Uh, this is, um, I, 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 
I identified at least seven techno-social practices uh, on the web realized by educators. This is the model. You can access uh, the blog, edumorphosis.blogspot.com to read the interesting article about uh, design your learning resources for a question, for comment, contact me. Those are the different uh, learning spaces uh, where I share information with all of you. So thank you very much to share with me in this conference. Uh, I hope you enjoy all the activities of the Congress of E-Learning in Seoul, Korea. So, so long. See you next time. Bye-bye.